If you are a fan of classic masculine fragrances, this is one you have to check out. It's called Into the Wild by Static Olfactive. I'm gonna be telling you all about this fragrance in just a moment, so make sure to stay tuned. Now, before I begin today's episode and I give you my thoughts on Static Olfactive, and this is a fragrance called Into the Wild. The perfumer is Darren Allen. The founder of the brand is Chris Martin. I wanna start the video off first by saying that if you're a fan of fragrance-related content or simply if you just love smelling your best, hit subscribe, hit the bell icon, and please give this video a thumbs up for the algorithm. It would really mean a lot to me. So here is a fragrance that utilizes some really rich raw materials, and this stuff is potent. It is powerful, it's bold, it's courageous. It comes with this card on the inside of the packaging, which I think is really nice, and it has all of notes listed on it. So check this out. In the top, you have an ozone accord, black spruce, cypress, two kinds, one from Spain, one from India, and a log cabin smoke accord, which is really interesting. In the mid, you have fern, a green leaf accord, galbanum, violet leaf, and wild honeysuckle accord. And in the dry down, you have cedarwood, agarwood, wild harvested, patchouli, Castorium Absolute, Civet Absolute, and Oak Moss. There are a lot of green ingredients in here. The fern, the oak moss, the spruce, so it's woodsy. And then it sounds like there's gonna be a bit of an animalic base as well. But one thing that is a certainty is that the ingredients are super high quality of natural origin. At least most of them are the ones that have the country of origin explicitly labeled right next to them. This is an exquisite fragrance. I'm gonna be telling you all about the smell in just a little while. Let's start things off with a quick look at the presentation first. First. Now the first thing that you're gonna notice is those green qualities that I alluded to earlier. It is green, it's earthy, it is so fulfilling, and again, it's going to convey that sort of classic masculine elegant touch that I think a lot of people are familiar with, right? So if you go back to like the pre-reform golden ages of perfumery, and I'm talking about the 60s, 70s, when we had a lot of patchouli and oak moss and fir balsam and fern and so on and so forth, and of course it has that green leaf accord and the gal so there are a lot of green ingredients in here. Some of them might be grassy or earthy or resinous, but it's green all the way through. And look at the bottle. If that doesn't tell you this is gonna be a green fragrance, then I think we're missing something here. But looking at some of these other ingredients as well, the ozone accord, so I don't get anything super bright and luminous in the opening. I'm sure there's citrus in here, even though it's not listed in the note breakdown, but I'm not getting anything ozonic per se. And I say that because whenever I think ozonic, I also think oceanic. And a lot of times those two accords are coupled with one another, but I am getting the cypress, the spruce, and I am getting just a touch of smoke. I don't know where that smoke is coming from. I don't know if it's birch or cade or just some kind of a resinous incense ingredient. I'm not entirely sure, but again, it is mostly green. In the heart, of course, the fern accord, the violet, I'm not getting too much of that. I know violet usually has a clean aroma, or if it's like a Fahrenheit by Dior type of a violet, some people say it smells a bit rubbery or like petrol. And then in the dry down, the cedar, the patchouli, oh my goodness, right? It is green all the way through. It is earthy. It is charismatic it is grown up, it's dense, it's mature, and I'm actually not getting a lot of the animalic ingredients. I know, I think it was civet, can smell a bit like halitosis, and I have civet oil, believe it or not, and it doesn't smell too pleasant, at least not on its own. Now the magic of it comes when you blend it masterfully with other ingredients, and that's what's happening here. So the civet and the castorium are blended to perfection because it doesn't smell rough and tumble, it doesn't smell animalic or anything like that, but it has a very pleasant demeanor about it. And again, it just kind of conveys this virility about it, right? So if you are a fan of some of these old school fragrances, whether it be Versace Lum or Paco Rabanne Porom, both of which were kind of in a green bottle, Versace Lum has like greenish liquid, but in a clear bottle with a black top. These are some classic masculine fragrances. Please try this one into the wild. Even the name does a fantastic job of conveying that wilderness aspect, that green earthy component that is embodied within the fragrance. A job well done, and I'm really looking forward to discovering more from this brand. Let's go ahead and finish things off with my overall assessment. <music> 
So first up, in terms of the uniqueness and the overall smell, while I compared it to a particular fragrances released within a certain time period and falling under a specific genre, it doesn't explicitly smell like any other fragrance that I've tried. Longevity, 10 plus hours projection, fantastic. For the first hour and a half of application, it did radiate just a little bit beyond an arm's length. It became an elbow's length scent right around hour seven, a skin scent right around hour 10. Versatility, I can see a lot of people arguing that this leans traditionally masculine. I think this is great for the colder weather, but there's something about this that I would enjoy in the springtime as well. So I will continue to wear this at least for the next month before it gets like super hot outside. And this is a very sort of a dressed up formal, elegant fragrance in my opinion. This might appeal to somebody a little bit older, a little bit more experienced in dealing with niche fragrances. But nowadays we have a lot of youth that own niche and I'm so happy to see that. I'm so happy to see that evolution, if you will. And as far as the presentation is concerned, I love everything about it. I love the lining on the inside of the box, the sturdiness, the presentation, the name, the color of the liquid. My final verdict on this fragrance is if you love those old world, old school, classic green masculine fragrances, you want something with super high quality raw materials. We're talking fern, cedarwood, oud, oak moss, patchouli, so on and so forth. Please try Into the Wild by Static Olfactive. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for joining me. I hope you took something of value from today's episode. And if you did, please do consider supporting the channel by subscribing to it. Hit the bell and give this video a thumbs up for the algorithm. Thanks again for watching. I love you all. And we'll see you tomorrow with a new episode. Bye.